Spotify mines a lot of data from us, but unlike Facebook, Google, or even TikTok, for some reason, we seem really cool with it. It'll shock absolutely nobody that people are increasingly concerned about what data big tech are taking from us. Yet, Spotify's most viral marketing campaign is literally one that shows off how much data they've taken from you. In this video, we're going to look at the history of Spotify Wrapped and how Spotify made data mining cool. Part 2. A brief history of Spotify Wrapped. The first Spotify Wrapped was released in 2015 under the name Year in Music, and it was, to say the least, a bit of a flop. It was clunky and people didn't quite realise why it existed. Undeterred, they returned the following year with Spotify Wrapped, and to say this one slapped would be an understatement. Spotify went big, redesigning the entire campaign to look like Instagram stories and giving you an easy one click to share button to ensure that it would spread faster than a true crime podcast among millennial women. Interestingly, and I'm aware I'm using that word liberally. Interestingly, in 2019, a former Spotify intern claimed they designed the wrapped assets and were given no credit for their work. But in the interest of fairness, Spotify did reply with a perfectly pitched PR answer. While ideas generated during Spotify's intern program have on occasion informed campaigns and products based on our internal review, this was not the case with Spotify wrapped. Hey, I said I was gonna include their response to be fair. I did not say I wouldn't put on a silly voice while I was doing it. I am fair, but bias. They also leaned heavily into relatable billboards like this one that told you you're not alone if you've been listening to Adele on repeat since Amy left you for her personal trainer, even though she insisted there was nothing to worry about. Hypothetically. And although they've experimented over the years by including the astrological signs of the top artists, the oldest song that you've listened to, quizzes and badges, it always returns to their core selling point. Here is what we know about you from what you've listened to. But why do people love it so much? And I'm including myself in this. It's a guilty pleasure every December. And yet, when I think about it just for a nanosecond, I remember it's data mining painted to seem cool. Which kids? It is not. What if I say they routinely see a 20% jump in app downloads the first week of December? And they see millions of people every year using their hashtags. We all know why the marketing industry is waxing lyrical and throwing awards at this, but why do non-marketing people, or as I call them, humans, also go gaga for these data-driven infographics? Why is creating a surveillance soundtrack to our lives so appealing. Part three, expression and identity. Although Spotify offers you a lot of the same features as a social network, they are a publisher and they can't hide behind the platform defense when they put out misinformation, which, you know, is a shame for them. As a platform, they know they need to lean on social networks to get their content out to more people. Now, they could ask and play influential celebrities a fuck ton of money to tweet about them, or they could get us, the great unwashed, to do it for free. Now, given this is a platform built on underpaying artists, it will surprise nobody that the marketing department went for option B. Most posts on social media are as about as authentic as AstroTurf, but this is like putting your vinyls out for people to see when they come round on a grander scale. And people take it really seriously. Hey, just in case you didn't know, Spotify Wrapped actually stops counting at the end of this month. So this is just your public service announcement warning that you have one month left to get your wrap wrapped up. It is October 1st, which means you officially have less than one month until Spotify stops tracking for 2023 Spotify Wrapped on October 31st. So if you're someone that doesn't want Gleecast to end up in your top five artists, now's the time to change that. Okay, to be fair, if you've been binge listening to R. Kelly this year, you might want to start listening to my homegirl Beyonce just to change your results up a little bit. I'd also argue it's really easy content for creators to put out to connect with their audience as well. By putting out their top music tastes, you see a flurry of replies from people excitedly sharing the fact that they also listen to such obscure artists as Taylor Swift or Harry Styles. In 2018, Spotify's customer service team had a ton of people complaining that their rap was incorrect. Here's two tweets that prove they had a million complaints. You know, like the mainstream media does. Now, why would their raps be incorrect? Part four, Spotify rap data. Spotify rap misleads people into thinking that it takes into account a year's worth of data, when in reality, the app only mines data from us between the 1st of January and the 31st of October. For wrapped. 
I mean, they're mining stuff 24-7, 365, but for this, they specifically stop on Halloween. This would mean if my lord and saviour Lewis Capaldi brings out a new album on November 1st, it won't count towards that year's raps. Knowing this might impact when Lewis releases his next song, because he knows being part of a rap campaign can lead to a massive spike in streams and sales, and he can't always rely on his impeccable TikToks. Most of us only do one thing with our partners. Pegging. Is it pegging? Now you might be asking why they don't include November or December data. Yeah, why don't they include- Well, me and a hat, the Associate Director for Creator Growth and Programs at Spotify, Brendan Cody, has the answer. Spotify needs time to compile the data and finish creating the graphics. And this is during Thanksgiving, when our staff are given time off. I'd also argue getting these custom videos from high profiling artists takes more than 10 minutes. Although, if they just wanted to get them done quickly, they could just go to Cameo. Given Spotify and TikTok have had a direct impact on the length of songs being released, you can see why they might want to steer clear of being accused by the record labels of skewing the data for the coveted Christmas number one as well. It's nice that Spotify have left the legacy players with something. Spotify does sell this data to third parties, and before you ask, what's the big deal? I'll just ignore the adverts. Well, me in a nice hat I got myself for Christmas that I'm using in this video so I can claim it as a tax write-off. That's slightly harder to do when it comes to music because music impacts your mood and people often link events or times in their life to songs and sounds. So by taking all of our listening data, companies can decide to put upbeat music in adverts for happy products and Adele in adverts for sad products. It's at this point I'd like to do my usual thing of going, ho ho ho, did you know that Spotify secretly sells your data to these people? Or, oh, did you know that they mine X, Y, and Z from you? But thanks to this campaign and a fairly lengthy, but relatively easy to read by comparison privacy policy, I can't. Bastards. Oh wait. Part five, emotional surveillance. This does not look good. Sorry, that's my AdSense payout. Spotify filed a patent that would essentially allow them to make suggestions based on your emotional state, gender, age, social setting, or even accent. As I covered in a previous video, patents are not just intellectual dibs. They also give us a strong indication of how a company or CEO sees the future of their product or industry. Why does this matter? Well, they plan to share all of this mood data with other companies, which means that marketeers might know you better than you know yourself. And if that's not a good advert for therapy, I don't know what is, which is why this video is sponsored by Better. <laughs> it's not, it's not, fuck that company. Are you listening to a wedding playlist? Here's some honeymoon offers. Are you cracking out the heartbreak tunes? Because here are some single women in your area that want to get to know you. Playing some tracks with teenage angst? Well, here are some products that promise you acceptance from your peers that you will never actually get. Facebook changed their like button to show a wider range of emotions than I could ever hope to achieve because they know that your mood has a big impact on whether you will buy something. Spotify and anyone who's ever had a favorite song ever knows that music is a very easy way to change your mood. And although it can be used for good when it comes to mental health or illnesses, it can also be used for evil when it comes to marketing or advertisers trying to change your state to make it more likely that you'll buy their shit. Part five, wrapping up things with copycats. Where there's a successful marketing campaign, they will always be lazy marketeers trying to copy it. But Spotify is kind of the king of this thing. And if anything, all the other attempts not only look try hard, but also have backfired. Apple Music has replay, YouTube has recaps, Last.fm have their own version of rap, but the less said about that, the better. Facebook and Instagram have their own year in review, which often shows people triggering or damaging memories, which I've done a full video on here. Supermarkets gave it a go, and there's even a plugin that shows you how many times you've been left on red in a year if you're fed up of feeling emotionally stable. And Pornhub even have unwrapped, or they would do if they'd answer my goddamn emails. And even I, as a lazy content creator have been making yearly roundups for the last three years showing all the toxic things that different social media sites have done over the past 12 months and this year is no different so if they're live they'll be linked somewhere on the screen and if not they'll be out in about a week's time go and watch them now godspeed